Anything less would be civilized. <laughs> about for Monday Well, our next uh, show that we're going to talk about here is a little show that some of you guys may have seen if you guys have followed me on Twitch for, for quite a while, because as I was like working for Bounding in the comics and editing a lot of like that stuff, I used to just play old episodes of a little show called Wild and Crazy Kids. And the best way to describe Wild and Crazy Kids for those who haven't watched it, this is a show that came out in 1990. It ran for a few years between 1990 and 1992. Uh, they ran reruns of this one up until, I believe, like the late stages of 97. I think it's when they like officially uh, uh, pulled that show off the air. But the concept here is like, hey, let's just get a whole bunch of kids from, from the city. And they filmed a lot of this in Los Angeles at the time. So we were like, hey, let's just get a whole bunch of kids in the, in the city, maybe during the summer break and whatever the case is. And... Let's just put them out there in like a camp like setting and try to see if we can get them to do as much wild and crazy and borderline illegal stuff as we possibly can. So during the course of this show, they were doing like these these weird challenges that sometimes they would go to like the beach and whatnot and do like these challenges. They would have like a, a, a kid decathlon where it's like one kid had to like drink an entire like bottle of like root beer and then like run like half a mile around like a mall. Some of you guys maybe don't even remember what malls are, but they used to exist back in the day. And it was just like one like crazy challenge after another, but it was essentially like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if you guys went to summer camp and we actually did stuff like this? So this is essentially Nickelodeon's summer camp show. Uh, do any of you guys have any uh, memory of uh, this uh, Wild and Crazy Kid show, or is this a little bit before uh, some of you guys' time? The, the title is super familiar, but I'm going to need to see some actual like, like visuals. But the way you're describing it, like I, I've definitely got memory. But this is what I also really want to see rebooted. Because imagine uh, imagine the like the challenge. Of, hey, you run through the streets of L.A. Don't step on any shit challenge. Like I, I think that's the one that we need yeah. to bring back. Well, to, to, to be fair, this was L.A. in the early 90s. So it was more of a try not to get shot challenge than a right. try not to step on boo challenge. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That was the best part about it. Like literally, these kids, wild and crazy, was not even close, not even close to like you know really describing it because these kids literally almost they had them almost run into traffic half the time first. Oh yeah, get over. So we oh, are I love, I love wild this. and crazy kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love I, this show, man. This so did I. I have a lot of fun memories of it. I especially have a lot of memories trying to reenact this shit with my friends out in the street mm -hmm. doing the same dumb things. I think I actually did try to chug a bottle of either Coke or root beer and go run down the block. It didn't end well. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we, didn't, so. we, didn't, we didn't really have much things to go on back then, so we just ran out and did dumb things and hurt each other. Pretty much. Yep. Oh. It's very interesting, too. It's like, so this is a show, that, like I said, lasted a few years. They had three. Um, the guys, the original three hosts of this show was Omar Gooding, who you guys know who's um, 
uh, uh, Cuba Gooden's uh, brother uh, at the time, uh, Johnny Defcoat. I'm uh, sorry, Johnny uh, Donnie Jeffcoat. I had that completely uh, screwed up there. And Annette Chavez. And Annette Chavez was here for the first season. She got replaced by Jessica Gaines in the last two seasons. And then they tried to do a, a revamp of this one in 2002. It didn't exactly go over very well. I think the gap period between when they ended the first show and the second show was like 10 years. And by that point, everyone was only interested in like you know the the Zoe 101 Amanda show like type show. So it was, it was, it didn't really work out the second time around, but the time that it was there, it was definitely a very, very entertaining uh, children's show. We'll go ahead and, and give you guys a little uh, peek of Wild and Crazy Kids. Thanks a lot, you guys, for helping me try these cords out for the chain gang relay we're having later. Chain <laughs> gang relay. But isn't uh, this a bit too much togetherness? Yeah, I mean, I already feel tied to this show. Oh, God. Isn't this crossing the line? Yeah, I still don't know how you roped me into this. I mean, what kind of pool do you think you have around here? Come on, you guys. Let's get going. That's enough, OK? Yeah, fine, Annette, fine. Yeah, I will follow you anywhere. At the moment, I really don't think you have any choice. Left, right, left, right. Falls almost immediately. Welcome to Wild and Crazy Kids. The show that goes anywhere and does anything to find kids having fun. Cross the border with the kids. The internet. <laughs> Annette Chavez. Omar Goody. Maybe that's why Annette Chavez got pulled after one season. <laughs> Pretty much laid the blueprint for Jack. Oh, yeah. I bet everyone recognizes what this is. And I bet you recognize what these are. No, well, in just a few minutes, we're gonna let these 50 kids go sure. eight all over the school bus. It's an outrageous and colorful school bus paint job, and you won't want to miss it. Right. <laughs> Ever play games in the rain? Well, today, with the help of this water truck, we're gonna create our very own rainstorm. Then we're gonna take these kids and send them out into the field for a game of rain squall. The fat kid mugging the camera. Be watery madness when these teams try scoring points against each other and the awesome power of our man made rain squall. <laughs> Wait, so they, they hit them with fire hoses? Watch Ryan. What's going on? What was this, the 1960s? Holy <laughs> 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 crap. Check out this place. Eggs, tires, ropes, limbo. Will they be able to pass this while we have rooftop Koreans waiting for them on top? It's our very own and very silly wild and crazy kids obstacle course. And in just a few minutes, a team of kids will face off against a team of grown in a game we call the Chain Gang Relay. The kids range from age 9 to 12. Kids age harder The adults are considerably older. Regardless of age, everyone's going to have to work together as a group because you're tied to the That ain't no kid right there. Bungee cord. Playing our chain gang relay is really simple. When I say go, the teams will move in a single group to our egg patch, where everyone will get down and push eggs. Across Some of these the women are so nose. disgustingly and LA. Like will stand just... up and jump in the group <laughs> to their tire terrain, then run to our crawling ground, where everyone will hit the ground and shimmy on their bellies for 10 yards. Next, they'll reach the limbo bars, where we've set up three different heights that each team member will have to face. That's not how you limbo. That's how you limbo. Hey. Knocks over the bars. Ducking, the whole team has limboing. to go back and do it again. But when they make it past this obstacle, the they reach the final challenge, the which is called walking the plank. You all break the rules together. You can't disqualify mm -hmm. everyone. <laughs> as a single unit, the teams will have to watch This is Nickelodeon. This isn't the Olympics. <laughs> the first team to bring all five members across the line will be our winners. But before we get started, let's meet some of our eager competitors. Now, she's first in the adult group, so what's your name? Ruth. And, and I'm against my Bruce? son, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, so he's first in line, too? Yes, he is. Uh-oh, how do you think you're going to do I think we're going to beat him. Uh -oh, you're going down, you Ryan. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is from the era when parents love beating their kids. Ryan, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and now we get to tie him up, too. Like, if I had kids and like I was put in a situation where I was competing against them, I wouldn't care, but you're going down, son. Mm -hmm. I think because he's the last one and he's a guy, so he's going to hold be like, life sucks, kid. You better learn it now. My grandmother was in the shoes. Let's get into position for the chain gang relay. Come on. Like, sorry, my boy. Be the man. You got to beat the man. Set. And there they go. Now remember the teams are tied together and can't move on to the tire terrain until all five members. Yeah, but put your face all over the ground. This homeless guy took a piss in yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I got out of prison early. The kids seem to be struggling out there, but it's still very close. 
The grown-ups are almost all across the finish line. There's the first. Come on, kids! Another grown-up gets her egg across. She's using her hair. Oh, no. Here come the kids! Do it with the Freddie Mercury stash would be really great doing stuff on his knees. The yep. Terrain. The kids better hurry up. Here they go. They're almost Yee. done. And the grown-ups are moving fast. And the kids made it. They need to pick up some time. They're definitely in this race. Look at them go through the tires. The grown-ups have entered the crawling ground, but it's not easy. Get on the ground! This is unfair. Be like, Nickelodeon put me in this pink shirt and made me crawl on the ground. <laughs> this is unfair. Those are literally boomers. They don't know what it's like to be in war. Mm -hmm. The grown-ups are getting the hang of it and are gaining ground. It's anybody's race. Actually, those kids, kids right there are now the boomers. The limo bars. Yep. The grown-ups are right behind them. Everybody's okay. still connected with the cords. Make it oh, you guys are cheating. This is a last yeah. obstacle, and the grown-ups make it too. Here we go. Whoever can walk the plank fastest. This is where we were taught as children to cut corners. Right. Yeah. And the kids are moving. Oh no! The grown-ups are stepping ahead. There well, they go again. Yeah. Come on, Probably kids. Fell down. You got to work as a team. Oh my like. god. Look how the grown-ups are doing it, one step at a time. But the kids are still struggling. Look how the grown-ups are walking, the way people <laughs> walk normally, like. <laughs> The kids stood no chance. We <laughs> just learned how to walk just a couple of years ago. I mean, yeah. you know? <laughs> half those kids barely clearly led to someone starting an OnlyFans later in life. A couple of those kids can barely stand up straight when they're just standing there. This one can't even clap for himself. Grown-ups edged ahead because their grown-up noses, which are larger than kids' noses, were able to move the eggs more easily through the grass. The kids seem confused and lost in valuable time. Oh, bit of body shaming, kid. The grown-ups had a decent lead as they started the tire terrain, and the kids were still struggling. Imagine one of the, the kids, kids like, that's no fair, they've got a Jewish guy on their team. Exactly. The virtually tied, and this is where the kids really poured it on. They flew past the grown-ups and continued to land as they entered the, the limo bars. Like this proved ball. to be equally easy for both teams. But then the last event, walking the plank, was the most difficult in the turning point of the race. They were both dead even, but the kids couldn't get their timing together. And the grown-ups, working as a unit, taking their time, were able to master the planks. By the time the kids figured it out, it was too late. It wasn't fair. They had an entire disco going on that did the exact same move. Back in a time when not only were parents okay with their kids losing, but they were trying to beat their kids too. Yeah. They were rubbing in their face and everything. Get good, you son. But it was hard for us to move our foot because they're hard. Yeah, you be didn't have free. coordination, huh? I don't think we, anybody anticipated the weight. It's like, like, look, I already lost. They gotta humiliate me. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Those kids are gonna have character. Kids battle a man made rainstorm in a fast paced Man made rainstorm. That's what we're calling it, huh? That would be fun, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, it looked like they were getting them prepared to be like in a situation where they get hosed down in a prison. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's riot training for the cops. <laughs> Omar Good presents Oz. Okay, guys, turn it off. We know your kids are gonna grow up and start protesting dumb shit. We're gonna start training for it now. And it's gonna be even harder trying to play a game in it. Hey, that's what this show is all about. So we've got the two teams of ten brave kids. We've got this amazing water they're brave because they have an intense game called this stuff. Rain Squall. Pop. And we made them all sign a waiver. <laughs> And facing them will be the Aqua Team. Yeah! You guys think he's gonna win here? Yeah! Oh, you are? Oh, they are. Yeah! Gang Wars! Yeah, you guys save it for the game. Red right. versus Great. Now, the teal. first round of our game Whatever will involve two members from each team. We've set up three no, balls in front of the water. It's not teal, is it like? The only like... team has to do is get balls into each one. 
We've assigned Aquamarine. point values to each barrel. Yeah. Now, the barrel with the largest hole is worth 50 points, the medium sized hole is worth 100 points, and the smallest hole is worth 200 points. And what's really going to make it harder and sillier is when we turn on the I, wish I, I know. The class. I, I want to know, like, who was making, like, the t-shirts for Nickelodeon during this time period. Because they had to make t-shirts for, like, Guts and Wild and Crazy Kids and Legends of the Hidden Temple. Like, someone was making bank in the 90s. And they sold it, too. Yep. Yeah. Probably had some in-house, dude, I would imagine. Sophia slips, but it's back up to score another 100. Here's Eric. The one has knocked the barrel over, but Eric puts it in. Smart move. The points will definitely count. The water's full blast. There's only 10 seconds left. Eric adds 100, and Sophia goes for 200. And time's just about up. Nice going. They really did a good job. Wait, this, this, literally, good war. This, this literally looks like a riot control for children. It really is. Never get left across the border again. It was like a Spike Lee movie. It's just so strange, bro. Like, like, for real, someone said earlier the four kids were all fat and whatnot. I think it was Cassie. Like, look at all these skinny kids. What the hell happened? Yeah. I, they weren't in the house all day. Yeah, I mean, back, back then, kids, back then kids used to go outside and play and do stuff, and... Yeah, I, remember I don't June, know. At my school, we'd have events like this. They'd bust us out to like the local um, park, and they'd have all sorts of events set up for us to have fun with, especially tug of war, which is like, what I want to see. Like I, I think to myself, like, did the popularity of video games kind of hurt the idea? Oh, I, I can't really say that either because, like, a decade later, like people were all into like you know the X game type sports, and skateboarding. So I was like. That there was still an element of like kids going outside and being active even when video games started to gain prominence in the 90s so I think, it was, I think it's a way it kind of balances itself in, in that you know you have the uh, suburban kids that maybe it was bad video games for them because you're in a good neighborhood where you can go outside and, and do stuff and then you know, for people that were, you know, the well, urban neighborhoods, the video games yeah. were kind of a good thing to keep people, in, the, you know, young kids in the house. Like, shit, I don't want to get street. shot. I stay inside and play Sonic. Like, yeah. Exactly. That was I'm not trying to die. Like, that's the reason why my parents got me and my brother, like, a Genesis or Super Nintendo. They didn't want us going outside. We grew up on the south side. On the other team, who will try to carry a ball through the gauntlet and stuff it into a barrel. The defenders can do whatever they like. To yeah, I was in a situation where uh, when I was like four, I said, Oh, shit, I'm giving them tons. Uh, when I was like four, a seven year old girl got ran over like right in front of my house because her parents would let her go and, you know, cross the street and stuff. So my parents would buy me video games because they were scared that the same thing would have happened to me. <laughs> they bought you video games to keep you in the house. Yeah, they really didn't want. They like, they were just like, you're not allowed to go outside unless we're there. And it's, it's like, like a, our plan works a little too well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's tough. Backfire. Here come the guys. Beat those kids. Mm -hmm. Like these kids are stealing hoes. Them. <laughs> this is fair. They're, they're getting hoes. They're getting beat. This is like a regular Mexican kind of party. Yeah. Right. Show you what it's like to walk into a whites-only diner. Yeah. <laughs> and there's another hundred. And another hundred. Good work. And they come again. POV. You're a brown person in <laughs> Mississippi in the 1920s. <laughs> And look, they even had the batons to beat them. Oh my god. POV, <laughs> you're a POV, you're a brown person in Mississippi, what they think is like in the 2020s. You have draft dodge and come. POV, you're at the El Paso border right now. Yeah, this is way too inspired like by Ryan. This is concerning. <laughs> Where's Rick? Now I'm a revenge, chest whack then. Just whack at that, whack at this, whack at this. See, I know you. I need it. And then, like, another, like, weird thing, too. It's like you watch these shows, and some of these kids are probably, like, you know, like, 9 to, like, 13 years old, and you realize that this is filmed, like, what, 34 years ago? So now now these kids are, like, in their mid-40s. <laughs> Insane, man. I was on wild and crazy kids. I their life, like, they're tired, they're tired. Secretary job at the utility Luke company. Like, ah, how did it end up this way? I was on wild and crazy kid. <laughs> they still have their sh their shirt mounted up on their wall. 
Oh my god. It's framed like a retired jersey. <laughs> yeah, I'm going from being the happy child to the to the forty year old that's uh, just waiting to hit sixty so they can retire. Damn. Yeah. Their cartel sector wild and crazy kids. What was the highlight of your life? Victoria was just tremendous, and so was everyone. Each team scored eight hundred points. So after two rounds, Red still leads off with seventeen hundred to fifteen fifty. game because for the next round is the free-for-all round and there are 1500 points to stake for each team oh, so they got more so punishment for these kids everyone on each team out into the field we'll set the clock at 60 seconds and start and we're gonna light the field on fire race all around now we're gonna shoot them with beanbags then run through the water and stick them into your own barrel so everybody good luck Aqua's <laughs> balls have yellow tape in their barrels on the left red's balls have red tape in their barrels on the right and there they go. This is gonna be nuts. It's crazy out there. Kids are getting there we so go. Come on. all over the place, stuffing balls in their barrels. It's a riot, like a I've never seen kids get this drenched. I mean, ever. Isn't it great? Like, like fire Everybody's scoring. The barrels are Christ, up there's so many euphemisms here. This barrels. would be like a Jeopardy Epstein wet dream of an episode. The yeah, this narration is clearly not necessary. Look at that. <laughs> We're just drowning kids at this point. <laughs> Yay, waterboarding! Oh my god! The CIA watches. Like, I think we have something here. <laughs> Red balls, 50 kids attack a school bus with gallons of paint and get totally ridiculous. Paint in your eyes. Turned to wild, mm. crazy kids. And this is back when it was lead paint, so a lot of these kids are retarded now. Right. Oh yeah, right. these kids really are wild and crazy. <laughs> Probably getting high off the paint. It's like, hey, well, we just thought that they could paint a decommissioned bus. We didn't really think this one through. <laughs> But we got an idea that's around. gonna turn glue? this school bus into a game that's just wild and crazy enough for our show. What we've done is divided this bus into ten <laughs> This is what the single-handedly would cause autism to rise in the United States. Yep. <laughs> and and you all thought it was the vaccines. Yeah. 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 The lead paint that China gave it in our beer in our bottle. I'm in the process, folks. Was your child on a game show on Nickelodeon back in 1991? You may be entitled to financial compensation. <laughs> Thank you, suck, love, and love. Jesus. Was your kid a wild and crazy kid? <laughs> yeah. The first team to totally cover their side with paint will be our winner. Okay, you guys, everyone, get into your position. We've won over the class action lawsuit of the guts kids falling to their deaths. We can win for you okay, too. On your mark, get set, go. Okay, now before each team can hard as you can. Of the bus, they've got to paint everything. And I mean everything on the I'm waiting for that kid yeah, that's scooping up a you know a handful of paint and just flat out eating it out of the can. <laughs> oh come on, Elmer! Just this will be the the paint on the he, get, he gets held away by security. <laughs> no one ate the paint. I'm already seeing paint in their hair. That cannot be healthy. Really doing a great job. Just Ain't no swab bringing that out. They can move on. Dang. Your daughter's dead shit. <laughs> now, now they gotta like swim in thinner just to get the paint off them after the entire time. Mommy, it burns! The parents over there are not getting that shit on you, otherwise you're walking home. And Yellow breaks first and moves on to the second section. Now they have another five kids helping them. And the ref gives Blue the go-ahead signal. It's anybody's game. All right, here we go. Yellow kids. kids flying everywhere. I think when this is finally over, there's going to be just as much paint on the kids as on the bus. But I got to say, like, from the perspective of the kids, it's like, wait, they're allowing us to just paint all over a bus and we can't get in trouble? <laughs> right. Oh, I would have loved to have painted all over the bus. I would have mm -hmm. I would have started a paint fight. Hell yeah. Blue's right on their tail. Their pink section is almost done. I guess we should be happy they're not trying to waterboard the kids with paint. Why didn't they do this first, then frame on? Let's see how Blue's doing. They look like they're done to me. And there they go. Hurry up and paint the bus! We only have an hour, son! Like, just hurry up! Hurry up for the cops get here. 
kids are cheering blue on as they roll paint over the windows. They need to tell they anybody like this is actually a commission school bus. They this just stole it. <laughs> <laughs> they they just went to like the local school district and it's like, hey, can we borrow your bus for a weekend? It's for a Nickelodeon show. <laughs> no. Okay. This will bring so much recognition to our community. Now their team's number 20. That means there we go. There's the kid the finger painting. Oh, retard. Yeah, bus, you don't stand <laughs> finger painting a bus. <laughs> I lost my brush. You were sitting inside. Remember this shot, everybody, because in just a moment, you won't even be able to look I ate my brush. Anymore. I ate my brush. Bye. Oh my god, they painted well, the camera. The window on the blue side is still clear. We can see perfectly. Oops. All right, go ahead. See if I What's can. with that kid? He's chanting. Thank you. Right here. I love how it's so bad they're addressing the referee. Like, what are the rules? What are the calls he has to make? Why do you have to blow the whistle? Yellow card. You painted too many, uh, too many layers. And blue yeah. moves on to the last section. They pulled ahead of yellow. The bus looks fantastic. I can't wait to see it totally painted. I am kind of impressed that kids that know what LSD is and enough to the the This enough. is it. Paint away, kids. Let it out. You may never get the chance again. What a beautiful mess. I don't yeah, I would say they you probably never get the matters. chance again. This is not something you just yeah. every now and again get the chance to do. <laughs> what do you want? This, this, weekend, Poppy? Well, I, I would do this as an adult. Bus. Yeah, like, it's like the, kids, you have to go home and act like normal human beings again. Yeah, this is quite literally the only chance in your life that you'll get to vandalize a bus and <laughs> not go to jail. This really is California. This is a precursor of things to come. What kind of pain? Oh, yeah. Are they using regular car paint, wall paint? <laughs> is this even non toxic? Who knows? Oh, it's toxic. <laughs> yeah, that's not fair. The kids literally aren't cool enough to get to the top. Get good. Get a growth spurt. So how was that, guys? That, that kid's got it in his mouth. Oh, <laughs> so what was the hardest thing about painting that bus? The taste. The front of the truck. That's that's sticking out there, and you guys have to get the rollers. Look at this girl right here. What about you? How did you get so paint covered? They all put the paint on me, and I was all getting in the way. Oh no. It looks like the paint attacked you. Here, turn, turn around here. <laughs> Were they bullying this kid? We just weren't paying know, attention. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about they gave that? this kid a swirly in the paint. So <laughs> okay, so let's talk to the blue team real fast, right? So, well, you guys almost won. What happened out there? Um, the Hardy Island, Marty and the Tyler were getting all messy and stuff, and then when they were rolling it, all, all the stuff. Everybody was throwing paint. They literally were. It looks like it. It looks like you look like punk rockers here. You guys look like punk. You got a little on your nose. It's because GG Allen out here and make the yeah, bus really rockin'. Yeah. Paint up on the windows of Fallon or something. Oh, really? <laughs> like Finally, a kid old enough to be articulate. Yeah. Everyone did a great job, okay? But, you know, buses aren't really made to look like this. So, thanks oh. to the magic of videotape, let's take 30 seconds and clean this bus right up. <laughs> All right. They do the whole thing in reverse. Mm -hmm. They literally are. I wonder if like the, the bus is like in a museum somewhere, or if they just like immediately destroyed it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's trap. As a kid, I didn't know that they you could reverse tape, so I thought this was literally like a version of child slave labor. Why are they making them take the paint off now? It was like, spoiler alert, you kids gotta clean it up yourselves! <laughs> <laughs> they no, they, they finished it, the, finish the little girl still covered in paint for some reason. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's so difficult for me not to just fall on top of it. Yeah. It's so difficult for not turn this into a case. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, I swear. <laughs> oh, my Christ. Elmer's like, I'm gay, so don't worry about me. 
Yeah, no, I'm not into the women, so that's, that's fine. <laughs> Unlike my brother, who's probably a little too much into the women. That's a whole other conversation for another oh, day. No. Yeah, in light of recent things, seeing him and thinking Cuba Gooden Jr. tied to Diddy, it's like, oh, God, it goes back even farther. Oh, yeah. Like, he started, like, panicking, and it's like, oh, God, yeah. But he was there for all three seasons. That was uh, Wild and Crazy Kids. It's like, call it a uh, Nickelodeon's version of Summer Camp. So there's what we have uh, there for that show. And like I said, I, I I still fondly remember it. Um, I liked the earlier episodes. Like I said, the second host was, uh, what was her name? Jessica uh, Gaines, who was on the show. She was like a redhead girl. And it's like, eh, she she may or may not work for me. I think I like the Hispanic girl a little bit better. Maybe that's just me being, you know, putting my personal uh, things aside there. But I really liked the show. I, I thought it was definitely a great show for, for its time. So what did you guys think of uh, Wild and Crazy Kids from what you guys saw? I think this is how we need to solve the situation in Gaza. There's wild and crazy Arabs, winner take all, Palestine, Israel, <laughs> oh, like whichever no. one wins these challenges gets the whole spot. Have them paint the have them paint a tank. It'd be great. <laughs> I, I think just the kids, kids, kids would do back in the day, back in the nineties and early two thousands. Like I remember having these events, you know, even with my school. Yeah, yeah. It used to, like I said, it used to be a window of a time where kids actually were active and they had fun and we did things and everyone knew what gender they were and it was just like a nice time for everyone involved. And then somehow we took a couple of turns and we ended up here. No one can exactly explain how it happened, but it's happened. So are you, are you telling me that none of the kids painting that bus was a trans kid? Well, shocking! It, it's shocking how trans kids just didn't exist back then. Like they, they just weren't around. Like I don't know what to tell you. It's like right. you we know. just had ugly children. We just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that like to you know throw paint on each other. I'd say you know you should force kids to do this shit now. Get them off their phones. Get them out of their games or whatever the hell they're doing off social media. Go outside and get blasted with a hose. <laughs> yep, in the face. Have your in parents the... kick your ass in some you know games or whatever. Build some character. You forget all about your goddamn. Hey, family. look, that this country was far better when we were blasting kids in the face with water horses and forcing them to eat paint. That, that's all I'm saying. There's a direct correlation <laughs> <Yeah>. there. 